Okay, we're gonna look at putting together a VI called Is It Prime uh, to determine whether or not a number is prime. Uh, it's a fairly involved algorithm. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so I put a number um, control. I'm gonna change its representation to uh, U64 because part of the definition of prime numbers automatically filters out certain numbers uh, to test for. For instance, negative numbers can't possibly be prime. Prime numbers are the set of integers, positive integers greater than two, that only have a divisor of themselves and another number, uh, one. Um, and, and so that's the definition that we're working with. So we want to use only integers, and because we don't need negative integers, we'll go with unsigned, and I'll make it the U64 to be the biggest possible um, once we can test uh, quite large numbers. Uh, the U64 representation goes from zero to about 18 quintillion, um, whatever a quintillion is. Uh, let me see, there's million, billion, trillion, something million, and then quintillion. So a great big number, 18 times 10 to the power of 19 or something like that. Um, and I've got an indicator here, a Boolean indicator, uh, that'll light up if the number is prime when the program's over. That's the output. I'll put um, the Boolean text on here, and I'll change it uh, to prime if this Boolean is true. Now I'll click this to be false, so I can edit the Boolean false to be um, not prime. Composite is the word for a number that could be prime, but isn't prime, so to speak. Um, a number that um, you tested to be prime, and it turns out it isn't prime. So uh, composite numbers are 4, uh, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, numbers like that. The numbers in the list that aren't prime. Okay, and to test for primeness, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to need to do repetitive calculations. Before we start that, let me do one more thing. I'm going to take this number control, the number that we're going to test for primeness. I don't ever want to check to see if 0 is prime because it, it isn't. The definition is prime numbers are integers greater than 2. So what I'm going to do is go into the numbers data entry options and I'm going to change it, uh, make the lower limit of this number, um, not the default limits which go from 0 to 18 quintillion, but I'm going to make it so it starts at 2. The lowest number I'm ever going to test is 2. I'm going to force it or coerce it to that. There is some question uh, about whether or not 1 should be considered a prime number, because after all, 1 only has, um, as factors, 1 in itself. And so it used to be considered a prime number. Trouble with it is, is it tends to make the computer algorithms for finding prime numbers overly complicated. They sort of need some special case programming to find 1 as a prime number. So uh, there's a bunch of more or less sketchy and shady mathematical arguments about why one isn't a prime number anymore. Um, but because prime numbers are sort of a matter of definition anyway, uh, we can sort of sidestep the problem entirely by just making our definition of prime numbers positive integers greater than two that only have factors one in themselves. Uh, so that's the definition we're going to work with. So we've uh, limited our testable number um, to a minimum of two. Let's go back to the diagram. We're going to need a loop because we've got to do calculations over and over again. We've got to take a number and try dividing it by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and see if we can find any factors. And if we do find a factor, we know we're done testing. We know it's not prime if we can find a factor. So we don't want a for loop. We want a while loop. We want a loop that doesn't always count up to the same number. Really, this loop executes until either it tests all the numbers that it should test or it finds one that works. So what we're going to do is um, create the number that we're going to try dividing by. We have number and we'll bring that to the loop. And this is notice uh, for a while loop, this by default is a non-indexing tunnel. It's not creating uh, an arrays. The actual number is going to go in here. Oh, and let's also give it a reasonable number to test for. Let's, let's put uh, 5 in here and we'll start testing 5 for primeness to have something to work with. I'm going to need to try and divide this number and the way I'm going to do it I could use sort of two ways you could do it. I could use the divide function 
And divide five by a, a bunch of candidate divisors, two, three, four, and see if any of them work. And what I have to do is divide them, and I'll either get a decimal or I won't get a decimal number. So I could divide the number by the possible divisors and check and see if it rounds off. Um, a better way to do it is use this slightly more complicated quotient and remainder division. So this takes x and divides it by y. So this input divided by some other number. And we'll add a shift register to manage that. And um, what comes out of it is not, um, like if you divide 5 by 2, you could say the answer is 2.5. Or you could also say that 5 divided by 2 is 2 with a remainder of 1. Remember long division back when you were a little kid, that remainder business. So the idea is if the remainder is 0, that means it divides evenly by this divisor. Uh, also this divisor needs to start at 2, so I'll create a numeric constant of 2 and initialize the shift register with it, and every time the loop executes, it goes up by 1. So I'll run this through and I'll insert, right click on the wire and insert from the numeric palette an increment. So we start at 2, we're going to take the number 5 in this case and try and divide it by 2 and see what we get, see if we get a remainder of 0 or not. So we need a comparison to see if this remainder is 0. And it's under the comparisons and you could use equal with a 0 or we can just use simply the equal to zero comparison, a little more clean. The number in this wire increases every time the loop executes. We're, I'm going to add a, an indicator to it. I don't really need it. It's not really part of the algorithm. But seeing this number, and I'll call it divisor, it's the number that I'm trying to divide by. I'm taking number 5 and trying to divide it by 2, 3, 4, 5. The number I'm going to try and divide it by, I'll, I'll call that divisor so that I have kind of a name and an identification for it. What I need to do is find out if it equals 0 because if it does, then I have found a factor. If th what comes out of this comparison is true, it means that when I try to divide number by the divisor, I found that it worked and it divided evenly with no remainder, so divisor is in fact a factor of number. That means number has factors, so it's not prime. I want this loop to continue until one of two things happen. Either I get to the end of the list of numbers I need to try, or this is true. One of those two things. So either I get to the end of the list of divisors, which means I didn't find uh, a factor, therefore the number is prime, or this did equal to zero, I did find a factor, and we can stop, and the number is not prime. So that's OR logic. Two ways for this thing to end. One of them is basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a label on this wire to explain what the wire means. I'm going to say, okay, if it's equal to zero, that means uh, factor found not prime. Need a little more room, I guess, in this wire. The other possibility is I get uh, the divisor all the way up, well, not quite up to number. If I get all the way to number, for instance, if I try and divide 5 by 5, well, of course that works. I don't even want to try that. I want to go up to 1 less than number. So I'll calculate 1 less than number. and I'll compare it to the number that we're trying to divide by, the divisor. I'm going to put uh, a label on this wire as well saying factor not found, so it's prime. In either one of those cases, if either one of those things is true, the loop will stop but it'll stop whether it finds that the number is prime or it proves that it is not prime. We need to work on this next. <laughs>